Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC and this is Blue Lion to CV and today I'm bringing you guys the match preview for our upcoming game against Barcelona tonight at 7.45pm UK time, second leg of the Champions League and before I get into the video, just a few quick announcements. The first one is that at 3pm, the youth team will be playing against Real Madrid. So you guys, if you want to watch that, it's on BT Sport or Fun and Stream Online. And just another piece of information as well, I'm going to be having the subscribe recording show after the match of you tonight. So you guys, if you want to participate in the show, in the link in the description will be the link to the PayPal to become part of the show. And thank you to everyone that came on last week. It was very fun. And tonight as well, everyone's been asking me to do this, but... For the Barcelona game, I will be having a live stream watch along. So if you guys want to see how I react and hear some of my thoughts throughout the game, definitely tune in and watch it today. But anyway, getting straight into the match preview. The referee for this game tonight will be Damier Scamilla. And this guy actually refereed us against Roma, where we did draw 3-3 with him. And he's actually taken over, I think, four games with us. I think we've won one game. I think uh, we lost once and drawn twice under him. So... Not really any, uh, you know, obviously correlation in terms of if he referees us to make anything favourable. With the injury news, only David Luiz is out. Bakayoko and Barkley are fit, but Conte has stated that he's going to take his time and be patient with Barkley because he doesn't want to rush him back just yet. Injury news from Barcelona's side, well, it looks like they're okay. And with Iniesta making a miraculous recovery, it seems like he will be involved in this game somehow. Now, there's conflicting reports in regards to whether he's going to start in this game or come on later on. I have a feeling, my own personal opinion, because this guy should be out for three weeks and he's come back in like two weeks, that he'll probably come off from the bench. So I'm thinking that we might be seeing Usman Dembele playing in this game. Now that is pretty worrisome in my opinion. Dembele did play in the last game. Uh, he did play on the right hand side. Barca did use a 4-3-3 with Coutinho on the other side as well. But with Dembele, I am a bit worried if he does play. Now the reason why Dembele doesn't play for Barcelona is the fact that he isn't used to the tactical system just there. You know, he's a young guy. He's a guy that likes to play very directly and you know, run at people. And Barca play a very you know possession heavy, patient game that doesn't necessarily get the best out of uh, you know, any attacking players really, really gets the best out of guys that play in midfield and obviously get a lot of touches of the ball. This is why Suarez has struggled so much with Barca this season. And one surprising stat is that Suarez hasn't scored a single goal in the Champions League this season, which is crazy to me. But you guys, you've seen my videos. I've broken down how Barca play, what their weaknesses are, their strengths and how we can play against them. And we know with Suarez, he's a guy that's all about making those quick early runs and he needs that quick service, obviously capitalise on that quick movement. And Barca just don't play like that because it's all about patience. And in a way, they do remind me of the Del Bosque Spanish international team where, you know, they weren't as exciting as Barcelona, not by a long distance. But in a way, they were kind of defending themselves by keeping possession of the ball. And um, of course, Barca have Messi can make anything happen. But here's how I'm getting a bit worried. You guys can see the lineup on the screen of... How I think Barca are going to start in this game with Dembele on the right hand side and this worries me because an advantage Barca could have is the fact that Dembele isn't fulfilling his tactical duties in, you know, in terms of the fact that he does like to neglect them and play to his strengths and you look at our left hand side with Alonso and potentially Rudiger playing there, we know that Alonso has no recovery pace, he isn't very good at one on one defending and with Dembele running at people that worries me because he'll be stretching the game. Now imagine Alonso has to move out to try and cope with Dembele, but he's the type of guy where you need to put two players on him. So I can see Rudiger having to leave his central position to push out wide at times as well. Now, if we don't handle this guy properly, if he does start this game, this is worrisome because then it's going to make more space for Messi to have more joy in and play between those lines. So that's the only thing that worries me. Again, Valverde has stated that Preferably, he wouldn't want to start Dembele in this game because he thinks that Dembele isn't ready for a game of this magnitude. You know, these pragmatic managers in modern-day football these days, honestly, a guy costs more than 100 million and he's not ready for a game like this. I don't know. But he did state that if we had to use Dembele, he would. And I think the only thing we can hope for is the fact that, you know, due to Dembele not playing as much and his form, that he wouldn't perform to his best abilities. Now, moving on to Chelsea and... It's potentially some big news. 
reports are coming out. It's starting to get leaked out a bit that Giroud could be starting in this game tonight against Barcelona. Now, I know a lot of people are happy with the fact that Giroud will be starting. A lot of people were vouching for this guy to play. A lot of people were impressed with his performance against Crystal Palace. And, you know, sometimes people might think I'm a bit biased. I don't personally think I am. But I just think with Giroud, um, I'm a bit surprised that people are just excited by him. I know that Murata's form hasn't been great and I'm starting to realise that I think it's down to his back injury since reports have come out that obviously uh, you know he's had these back injuries I think this is what's really been affecting his form the second half of the season think about it like this Conte can't rely on him because again I've been told personally too that with Murata a lot of people think within the club and the medical team that he could actually play games but Murata in his head's thinking that obviously it's his body, he's not feeling fit, he doesn't want to risk anything. And I think when you're a manager, you've got a lot of high pressure games. You want to know that players are behind you. And I think that Conte isn't going to be happy with the fact that he can't rely on Murata when he needs to. So I think that's what's carrying him against Murata as well. But moving back to Giroud, I think this would be an incredibly bold decision to use Giroud in a game like this. A lot of people were impressed with him against Palace. Like I said, I'm going back to this point because I'm really surprised. Against Palace, it was Pete Giroud. He missed easy opportunities, which he should have scored from. His link-up play wasn't as amazing. Yes, he won a handful of aerial balls, but then what was he doing then with the possession? It wasn't as if he was linking up the play effectively at all. And the fact that this guy has no recovery pace whatsoever and he doesn't move. Now, thank God we were playing against a poor Crystal Palace team and we got the first goal. That changed the whole dynamics of the game towards our favour. But in terms of what Giroud was doing, people were like, oh yeah, you know, William and Hazard have someone to link up with. I don't necessarily think so. I mean, I keep stressing this all the time. There'll be a lot of moments in this game where we will be parked in our own half, defending, keeping our positions, and obviously not wanting Barcelona to obviously break us down centrally. So if that's going to be the case, and we know how Conte likes to press with the teams as well. I always refer to this point so many times. It's literally like a 20 to 15 yard gap between our defence, midfield and attack, everything's in unison. That means that Giroud, if he's playing, will be on the halfway line a lot. Now think of it like this. Barca have Umtiti and PK that would be on him. And then obviously Bruce gets dropping deep as well. Now Giroud will be winning a handful of, you know, aerial opportunities against him. But the number one thing everyone seems to forget about is that he doesn't have any pace. Now think about it like this, if you're by your halfway line and we have a counter-attack, because we will be relying on the counter-attack in this game, we're going to need Giroud to cover great distances. He's going to require a lot of physicality from him today and I don't think Giroud can do that if I'm being honest. Now, playing against Palace is completely different because a lot of times we were able to assert our game on them, we were in their half and of course Giroud then doesn't have to, you know, necessarily cover a lot of distances and sprint a lot. Remember, he'll be sprinting a lot in this game and obviously when you're defending, you do sprint a bit more and this is why you get tired as the game goes on. I just don't think that Giroud is going to offer that alternative for us and it brings up an interesting discussion. Obviously, if it looks like he will be playing and Morata doesn't start, it really tells me that maybe Conte just isn't really rating Morata. 100% I think, of course, is poor form as well but let's not forget, this guy's our record signing. And I think that if you're not going to show faith in him for big games like this, I don't think that's helping Morata because throughout his career, he's normally been sacrificed for the big games. Yes, I know he went on that run in the Champions League, but that wasn't a regular thing for Morata to start in big games. I mean, last year for Real Madrid, I don't think he played once against Atletico. And against Barca, he was making sub appearances as well. And um, I don't know. Again, with this game, it's going to be down to the players as well, taking responsibility. The benefit and bonus is the fact that Hazard should be out wide and William will be out wide as well. And as I keep stressing, the left-hand side, Hazard's side, is going to be key to getting something from this game because Barcelona fear Eden Hazard. In that game, in the first leg, whenever he was on the ball, he was commanding three or four Barcelona players. And... If you guys look at the shots that William was taking, where he hit the post twice and obviously scored, they literally were identical. They all came from the fact that Hazard received the ball out wide, played William, who was free in space, and William had the time to take a shot. Barca had no plan for that, and William, I feel, will be the underrated key in helping us get something from this game. You guys, 
honestly, I feel defensively we'll be okay because I thought we really stopped Barca from doing anything. It was quite comfortable. I've rewatched this game so many times watching it. It was a very comfortable performance. Literally a moment of, uh, you know, unfortunate where we see Christensen makes a mistake, but Barca didn't do anything to show that they were going to get a goal in that game. And really watching them, they're not the same team. I keep stressing you guys. If you want to understand how they play in the card above, or I think on that side, Make sure you watch that video so you can get an idea of how Barca played. It, it's going to ease your fears. They're not as great. They're much slower. They're much more patient in the build up of possession. And they're too narrow a lot of times. So I feel that effective, efficient counter attacks will be key. Let's not forget, you guys, we've got one bonus today, which we've never had with any Chelsea team previously playing against Barca at the new Camp. We've got guys, we've got wingers who can cover distances, they've got skill, they've got pace and they've got a goal threat. We've got Hazard on the left, William out wide, William was, he's, he'll be roasting now, but Hazard will just destroy Roberto as well. If we can get the ball to these guys, it's going to be key. The only risk in my opinion is if Giroud can offer that type of hold up play. Now again, with Giroud in my opinion, his better attributes for his personal game is the fact that his hold up play is decent. But then you guys, we've seen Giroud over how many years and how many big games has Giroud really stepped up and performed in? He doesn't. This is what worries me. I feel with Murata, the only reason why I'm starting him in this game is because we get some, you know, we get some alternatives in terms of how he can play against Barca. At least with Murata, you can actually, you know, you could potentially hit a ball over the head of PK and he can run onto that. With Giroud, you don't have that attacking possibility because he has no pace. So this is the risk, you guys. This is what I'm trying to say. I feel that, you know, we could be limiting ourselves to how we can attack and break down Barca. I'm hoping personally Conte does use Murata. But anyway, you guys, let me know in the comment section below how do you think we're going to fare against Barcelona later today. And obviously, I hope to see you guys for the live stream watch along. And I hope to see some of you guys enter to become part of the live sub calling show later tonight after the match review. Anyway, you guys, I'm the NEFC. This is Blue Lions TV. Signing out.